Welcome in to the Crypto Bunker podcast. Tonight, I'm going to be talking to you guys about why I believe that USDC will one day be the world reserve currency. Stable coins are probably the most important category in crypto that absolutely no one is talking about right now. Stable coins make up a large percentage of the crypto market cap, about $100 billion, with about 67 billion of that being USDC. That's wrong. 67 billion is Tether, 27 billion USDC. They provide crypto traders, yield seekers with a store of value that accurate, accurately tracks the dollar and can be sent around the world in a matter of seconds, which is unlike anything we've ever had uh, as a country being able to transfer dollars without an intermediary. USDC is clearly the institutional choice because it's backed by Circle, and Circle is backed by Goldman Sachs, as you see here, who is taking them public soon. Uh, so Circle is going to be a public company. With all the connections the Treasury and the government has to Goldman Sachs, I believe it's obvious what's happening here. Goldman has always had insiders within the government and the U.S. Treasury and Fed, like Steve Mnuchin, uh, who was the Treasury Secretary. He was also uh, part of Goldman Sachs. So they regularly rotate in and out uh, through the CFTC, through the SEC, through the Treasury, a lot of uh, ins and outs of shady things that happen with Goldman Sachs, uh, people that then move into the government. So why are they the ones who are involved in bringing Circle public when they have all these connections to the Treasury and the US dollar? When everyone is saying stable coins are going to come under extreme regulatory pressure, Goldman Sachs is backing Circle and USDC and bringing them public. They probably are doing this because USDC has already been chosen to be the one that will be used. I mean, it's it's inherent um, in the name. It's U.S. digital currency. And so why wouldn't the Federal Reserve use this as a testing ground right now? Um, you know, it's been being tested for a few years. Uh, why not continue to test it for a few more years and um, before taking it mainstream, right? Um, am I saying they plan that out? No, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that the Federal Reserve knew that USDC was going to be the chosen one the entire time, but they probably saw um, that it's, you know, it's already called USDC and, you know, the crypto community is already becoming very familiar with it. Um, it's the, the most trustworthy uh, company that is basically backed, uh, you know, um, audited and things like that to make sure that it's backed one-to-one -one, uh, with US dollars, which we'll get in a little bit more into later. There's a few articles that have come out lately that I also think lead to um, you know, this being very obvious that they're moving towards uh, this path of becoming the world reserve currency. With the Fed talking about bringing on a USDC, which they have by 2023, that would line up perfectly with speed optimization on Ethereum to be able to scale 1 million transactions per second through sharding and layer two solutions, which would be fully, fully inputted by them. I believe by then USDC will be used on all chains, but its main basis in security will still be Ethereum. This is an Ethereum based ERC 20 token. Why would the US, a country who wants to remain the, the reserve currency, issue a stablecoin on a network like Stellar Lumens or XRP. Protocols that have not been rigor rigorously tested and are not decentralized at all. That would be a security risk. With Ethereum, you have the security and the decentralization to make the network secure enough, while also having it be a public blockchain where everything can be seen. So they're still gonna be able to track you and do all the things that they wanted to do before, it's just going to be on Ethereum, which is only, I think people get confused with the word decentralized. They don't actually understand what it means. It means 
the number of nodes and computers that are actually running a network make it so that there cannot be um, an attack on the network. Um, and so it's just, it decentralizes the power um, and the power is, is going to be with the ETH holders and the ETH stakers in the future. And so um, if you want to sort of be in on this, um, the governance of ETH and the security of ETH, then you know, buy ETH in preparation to stake your ETH for 6% interest in the future. But again, I just think some people don't understand. They think the government's like not going to go towards a decentralized blockchain because they want to have all the control and all that. It's like, no, they just want to see what everyone's doing in a perfect way, which USDC will allow them to do. So it's not just security, but being as official as possible and releasing on a chain that is most likely a multiple trillion dollar market cap at that point. You would want to release on a totally well-known blockchain like Ethereum that is also public um, instead of a chain like Tezos or, you know, Stellar Lumens or XRP that is kind of like a vaporware chain that not a lot happens. There's not a lot of developers on it. Um, it can be, you know, hacked easily. Obviously, if they do come out with this, U yes, this USDC, they're going to want it on a blockchain that that is very hard to attack. Um, and that if it is attacked, there's enough developers and people who can shift quickly to um, to fork the network like what happened today. Um, there was a soft fork of the network, which, um, you know, everything went smoothly. Everything's still working. So it's basically just the nodes updating the the um the software that they're using but regardless usdc will always take on the security of proof and um from the ethereum blockchain so it can still move uh through other chains but its main home will always be ethereum where it was created so the world reserve currency will therefore be built on ethereum and I just wanted to go through a, a few um, articles that Goldman Sachs, obviously back payments group circle aims to become a full reserve national digital bank. So this is news that um, they said they want to operate as a full reserve commercial bank. Uh, Jeremy Allaire, who's the CEO said um, this digital currency technology would make the financial system more resilient. Interesting um, that he's saying the entire financial system could be run basically on Ethereum and would probably make it more resilient, um, just like USDC. So yeah, this is what he said. The aim of Circle was to eventually build a global digital currency bank regulated in the same way as traditional commercial banks and held to the same standards, but with free and frictionless transaction and payment mechanisms. We believe that full reserve banking built on digital currency technology can lead not only to just a radically more efficient, but also safer and more resilient financial system. Um, so yeah, as you can kind of just read through this, um, I'm gonna go to the next article that says Coinbase Circle says USDC reserves to be in cash and treasuries, which is not something you would just do if you weren't about to be connected to the Federal Reserve in a certain way. So all banks are connected to the, to the Federal Reserves, um, which can you know go back and forth with with their reserves, and there has to be certain regulatory requirements behind that. And so USDC is going to follow these requirements to be a part of that system. Uh, Coinbase Global said all the reserves of second largest cryptocurrency stablecoin will shift into cash and short-term U.S. Treasuries. It said that some of the reserves did include corporate bonds and commercial paper, which is kind of like tether. Um, and so now they're just going full, um, fully backed by dollars in a bank account. So the reserves uh, were only in cash until March 2020 when the company added short term US treasuries, blah, blah, blah. Says it gives the consortium less ability to diversify, which can be important down the line. Uh, 
They're saying this this is a splash announcement to address a problem that doesn't exist. So, but I think that this is kind of like they're just going to follow whatever these people tell them to do, which is a little bit scary. Um, but I think in general, um, I think that the powers that be basically see the writing on the wall at this point of the Ethereum technology and how unstoppable force it is. And so they're going to just have to integrate with it. There's no way around it. Um, I thought this was interesting too. Uh, you know, I haven't really heard this news uh, until today, but USD coin holders will soon be able to transfer the stable coin via human readable addresses. So as you know, there's the ENS ETH system. Um, I bought a name at cryptobunker.eth. There's definitely people who have bought names up. Uh, Budweiser recently bought beer.eth. Um, so this is something that I think in the future is sort of like the new internet, like I, like I've been saying is Ethereum. And so these names will be interesting. I think USDC is creating their own names where it will be uh, dot coin usernames for USDC transfers. So it'll make it easier for normies uh, to kind of transfer their coins around instead of sending a long address, you just send like, you know, um, crypto bunker, you know, crypto bunker dot coin or whatever. Um, so, so yeah, I thought that was, that was pretty interesting. I also wanted to show you guys, um, basically that you can earn, uh, 8.44% interest on USDC on yearn.finance slash vaults. Um, if you wanted to, uh, this is my long-term plan when I do cash out, uh, some of my crypto holdings, uh, when we get to, you know, around like 20 K ETH, uh, $90 sushi, uh, $3,000 Aave, um, $200 polka dot. I'm going to cash some of that out and I'm going to put it into USDC and then I'm going to sit on the interest. And so my plan is to hopefully have enough profits, uh, to, to then just have being, being able to earn interest, uh, and as kind of like your job, <laughs> um, and also just, you know, staking my ETH, I'm not going to sell a lot of the ETH. Um, you know, I, I really don't want to sell any of it, to be honest, because you're just constantly earning rewards with X sushi, with polka dot, with ETH. Um, and you can also stake with Ave, but you can, you just earn these, these, uh, these rewards. Um, but I do want to make sure that I'm, you know, taking some profits along the way. I think it's important, uh, for just for your sanity, uh, to, you know, and I haven't really done that, um, in a year and a half, I've been waiting for the opportune time to do it. And I'm really hoping that this is kind of the next leg that we're about to go on. And, um, yeah, so if you're not staking your ETH and you have dollars, I recommend uh, doing Yearn. It's pretty easy, I think. If you have USDC um, in your wallet, then um, you would just, I don't know, I think you just deposit somehow through here. I've never done it, but I do trust Yearn. Uh, yeah, as you can see, like you just kind of, go to your MetaMask wallet, what, and if you have US, you can send your USDC to your MetaMask wallet, and then you put it in here. Um, and obviously this is like the most trustworthy uh, of, the, of the stable coins. And it's also earns you the most interest, which is cool. And so, you know, put whatever, if you want to put uh, $10,000 in here, um, you know, you'll earn $844 a year in interest on that. And uh, it's pretty cool. So, just wanted to go over those few things with you guys. Um, check the update on how much ETH is being burned right now. Uh, it's absolutely insane. Uh, some of these NFT projects are just out of control. Uh, Killa's NFT, also Atom Bomb. Um, I don't know if you know if I have still have it up. Yeah, the the Atom Bomb uh, squad. Um, yeah, no, that's not that, but. Um, yeah, the Atom Bomb Squad, if you want to look that up, it's a pretty cool project. Uh, I, I would recommend trying to get some if you can. Um, right now, I think you have to pay like 0.25 ETH for them, but that price is going to go up. This is a project that was 18 years in the making. Um, and by owning the NFT, you get a free t-shirt with the same logo as your NFT. 
And I think you also have like partial royalties on that particular atom bomb logo that when it's sold in the future, you'll get like partial revenue of that or something. It's absolutely insane what's happening right now. Um, as you can see, the atom bomb squad is the second biggest burn today. Um, and then I believe this is the killer's. Yeah, this is the killer's uh, address. It just doesn't say that, I think. Yeah. Um, but then you can see like OpenSea. So we're just burning so much ETH right now that it's it's just impossible to sell ETH. Like, how are you going to like it? I just feel like that's why it keeps selling off and not going lower. Like a lot of times ETH usually would go lower, but it's just getting bought up so quickly. I mean, it's with the burning of ETH right now, um, we're looking at negative issuance, negative 1.3% issuance after the ETH 2.0 merge. So this is simulating the, the ETH 2.0 merge. Um, you can find this information at ultrasound.money. As you can see, all time, we're burning 3.59 ETH per minute. We burn over 100K ETH. This is absolutely out of control. 0.1% of the ETH has now been burned forever, and that's out of existence. With the EIP-1559 merge right now, uh, with this, we have 70% less selling from ETH miners. And so who's going to sell? Like, who's selling their ETH besides these 30% miners? Uh, traders, okay, like, yeah, traders might be trading and selling and buying, but most people, I think, are holding uh, for ETH 2.0 uh, to stake their ETH. Some people are staking their ETH now, locking it up until the merge, so there's just a lot going on in Ethereum, it's super exciting, and I hope that you guys are learning a lot uh, from these videos. If you are, please give, it, give this video a like, make sure you're subscribed, and have a great night.